This is a float switch. I thought you might be interested in seeing how they work. Typically they're used for stuff like uh, running a pump to uh, empty a sump in a house or something like that. They're oftentimes also used for filling water tanks. I use them for filling water tanks or stock tanks or whatever using solar pumps and so yeah that's my particular application for them. Uh, we can look over here on the instructions and we can see here's this upper cap and underneath the cap is a very clever mechanism for turning the switch on and off. We'll take that apart and look at it in detail. There is also uh, a set of floats and these floats are interesting because they're about half full of water and what happens is that uh, they are tied to the string and this string operates the mechanism which turns the switch on and off. So uh, when both of these floats are out of the water they are heavy enough to pull down on the switch and either it has both normally open and normally closed positions so it will activate it, it will pull down on the switch and when they are both underwater they are light enough that the mechanism will pull up and uh, take the switch in the opposite direction. So that's uh, these over here. Okay, so let's uh, take this uh, switch apart and do some close-ups and see how that works. This is our switch and I've set up a brief demo for us. Uh, on this side I've got power coming in. On this side I've got the normally closed and normally open uh, switches attached to some LEDs and normally these would be they could be an indicator light or it could be a pump. Uh, in our situation we usually use uh, the one like this uh, when the tank is full this would be the indicator light telling me the tank is full and this would be when the pump is running and let's do that I will pull on the string which is down here below uh, get my thumb out of the way and you can see what happens so this would be the pump running and then when the tanks full and the floats come up it goes click and then I get an indicator that the tank is now full so that's uh, pretty much it uh, just again normal normally closed and normally open positions on it okay so now we'll take this part and uh, get a good look at how the uh, mechanism works there are two levers up in here you can see this one has a roller on it and the other one's right above it when I pull the roller pushes the second lever and that's when I'm moving right now the second lever actually pushes up on the on the uh, switch you can see the black part of the switch right there and yeah we'll uh, take this apart and see how that works so this is held in by two bolts I've removed the nuts already I just slide those out and what will happen is we'll lift out the switch and it's just kind of a normal switch I mean it's just you push there and it does its business and then we will get a little bit better angle on this and take a look at the this kind of compound lever thing that's going on this is the top lever and it actually pushes against the switch right there and we'll flip it up and out of the way it goes over that way now you can see where the string is attached on this lever. It's kind of like a seesaw. Uh, it's got the roller on it. Kind of move around this way. And there you can see that happening. So when you pull on that, the roller pushes up on this other and it pushes up against the switch where my finger would be. Uh, let me pull on the string. Yes so it pushes up where my finger is and of course the roller reduces the friction and yeah that's uh, pretty much all there is to it when I got this particular switch it wasn't working correctly and yeah the uh, I can't remember which one it was normally open normally closed wasn't activating and what I found was you see how much play there is in that if I squeeze it all the way down and tighten the bolts then it worked fine so that was one issue the other issue is this uh, longer lever when it came up it would strike this screw the screw head was sticking out just far enough that uh, it would uh, also cause a problem so I went in there and tightened that screw down so um, yeah sometimes these are uh, they're kind of inexpensive and they have to be 
fine-tuned. In my solar applications where I have used this in uh, water tanks to fill water tanks, one problem I have found is that you can see in the diagram that the uh, switch is mounted on top of the water tank and of course uh, it passes into the tank. Um, and we'll do a close up here in a second and I'll go back to the switch and look. But uh, the air above the water of course is saturated with uh, moisture and as soon as the temperature goes down I've had uh, serious issues with condensation inside the switch really shortening the life of the switch. This part is screwed into the water tank and as you can see it's just a straight shot all the way up to here where the string comes through and so uh, you know heavily uh, humid air reaches this it can get uh, easily uh, to the point of condensing onto the switch and the electrical parts of it. Now there's supposed to be these slots here that uh, allow the uh, moisture laden air out, you know, to circulate out or get blown out by a breeze, but I found that that wasn't adequate. Um, so I made some modifications and I'll describe those. Um, in the cover I drilled large holes around the circumference of it all the way around and then I lined the inside with plastic, not metal, but plastic mosquito screen because you don't want the uh, metal anywhere near the, uh, the you know, high current or high voltage, whatever you're using. And yeah, so uh, that's, uh, that was kind of a necessary uh, fix. Also, I added a plastic membrane across here before I screwed it in. I put a piece of plastic over here puncture the hole through it to keep out as much water as possible and give these slots and holes and whatever the maximum chance to carry the moisture away before more of it came up from the tank. Here you can see the uh, holes they drilled in the mosquito net. This thing is up here, it's just like an umbrella to uh, keep water out of the holes. And yeah, I kind of butchered this over here because the lid comes up and hits that. So I had to uh, modify it kind of heavily. But uh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And then you can see it goes down inside the tank here. Um, and then I also had this screwed down, which I didn't mention earlier, but to, to keep this cap from blowing off. Well, that's it for this review of our float switch. So whether you're pumping water from sumps or filling water tanks via solar or whatever, hope you found it useful and interesting.